Does your cat have worms? If you are watching this video, there's a good chance the answer is yes, or at least you are probably suspicious. And let me guess, you have questions like, my cat's fecal was negative, but I'm seeing worms. My vet just gave a dewormer to my cat, so why am I seeing worms? My cat is indoor only. How did they get parasites? In this video, I'll chat about the five most common parasites I see that affect a cat's digestive tract, what they are, how cats get them, symptoms to watch out for, how we diagnose them, the risk to you, and most importantly, how we treat and prevent them. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Oz. Quick quiz question. What are the five most common parasites I see in practice that affect a cat's digestive tract? The answer, roundworms, tapeworms, hookworms, giardia, and coccidia. Now, when I say worms or parasites, many cat parents expect to see them, which is not always the case. Can you guess which parasites you can expect to see with the naked eye? You can only see roundworms and tapeworms easily. The rest require a microscope. So let's chat about each of these parasites and what you need to know. First up is roundworms. By far the most common parasite in the group. If you have ever said, my cat just vomited up what looks like spaghetti, you've just diagnosed a roundworm. They can also be passed in the stool, are a few inches long, and whitish in color. Cats become infected with roundworms by either eating an infected animal or insect, the fecal oral route, in other words, eating something that is contaminated with infected feces, or very young kittens can get them from their mother's milk while nursing. Our second most common parasite is the tapeworm. Ever notice rice in the fur around your cat's back end under the tail? If so, you just diagnose tapeworms. Tapeworm segments, when dry, look like little white grains of rice or sesame seeds. If they are alive, they move as their little bodies stretch and contract, almost like they are waving at you. They can also be vomited up and will look whitish in color, flat, long, and segmented. Cats can get them from eating an infected animal or ingesting a flea, even if you don't see a flea. Just one flea can enter the home without your knowledge, be ingested by your cat during their normal grooming routine, and in a few weeks, surprise, tapeworm segments on the back end of your cat. I often diagnose fleas from cat parents finding tapeworm segments on their cat. So, if you see tapeworm segments, treat the tapeworms, but also treat for fleas. Our next parasite is the hookworm. Hookworms are not very common. Short, slender, and you typically do not see them due to their size. Cats can become infected by ingesting something contaminated with the larva, eating infected animals or insects, or by the larva penetrating the skin. So make sure you don't run around the yard barefoot. They are literally vampires in your cat's intestines, attaching to the intestinal wall and sucking blood for their nourishment. Because of this, unique symptoms of hookworms may include anemia or black tarry stools due to the loss of blood in the digestive tract. One parasite you definitely will not see in your cat's stool is Giardia. A single-celled protozoan is spread by ingesting an infectious cyst either from water or anything contaminated with infected feces. They are hard to see on traditional fecal analysis, which is why an ELISA test was developed to help diagnose this parasite, since it can be easily missed with a microscope. Our final parasite is coccidia, another microscopic one-celled protozoan classically causing yellow diarrhea in cats. Cats become infected by eating an oocyst from anything contaminated with infected feces like soil, food, or water. You may have noticed I keep saying fecal oral route, which literally means eating poop. While that is gross and may sound far-fetched, remember cats are meticulous groomers. If a cat steps on soil, litter, or any surface that is contaminated with a parasite, then lick their paws until they are clean, that parasite they just licked now has access to your cat's digestive tract. Quick quiz question. Which of these parasites can cause disease in humans? Roundworms, tapeworms, and hookworms can all cause disease in humans, especially kids, the elderly, and immunocompromised. While the coccidia we are chatting about in this video does not cause disease in humans, different species of coccidia can, namely Toxoplasma and Cryptosporidium. As far as we know, Giardia is rarely transmitted to humans, and the take-home message here is, wash your hands. 
digestive tract parasite symptoms. Everyone is familiar with the classic symptoms like soft stool, diarrhea, blood in the stool, mucus in the stool, vomiting, weight loss, not gaining weight, or a pot belly appearance. Rarely you may see a loss of appetite, coughing, a painful belly, prolapsed anus, constipation, or obstruction in the digestive tract. Now, I mentioned coughing as a rare symptom, so which of these parasites can cause coughing in cats? Roundworms and hookworms can travel to the lung and cause coughing in cats. And these parasites should be considered in a coughing cat, especially a kitten or a cat that spends time outside. Check out my Is My Cat Coughing video to learn more. And since we are here, two other parasites that can cause coughing in cats are heartworm and lungworm. Diagnosing digestive tract parasites. By far the most common test is the fecal flotation test, where a stool sample is put into a solution that allows the eggs and cysts to rise to the top, which can be found by looking under a microscope. Fresh is best, and stool samples should be evaluated within 24 hours. If you can't bring it to your vent right away, it is best to keep it cool, like in a fridge. Otherwise, we may have a false negative result. You should test your cat's stool sample on their first visit to the vet or at least annually. Kittens, cats that spend any amount of time outside or immunocompromised cats should have their stools checked more often. There are a few limitations to this test, which may include sample size. Small samples may miss a parasite and can result in a false negative result. Stool sample quality. Hard and dry samples cannot be used and if they are, may result in a false negative result. When the test is performed, stool samples that are older than 24 hours old may result in a false negative result. Experience of the person examining the sample under a microscope, human error or inexperience may result in a false negative result. Type of parasite, Giardia and Coccidia can be hard to see even with an experienced person looking at a stool sample under a microscope and the life cycle of the parasite. Not all parasites shed continuously, so if a parasite is not shedding, you won't see an egg, another false negative. Because of these limitations and the fact that a cat can still have a parasite even if you don't see an egg, that's why repeating a fecal analysis is so important, especially in at-risk groups like kittens and cats that spend time outside. And speaking of all these false negatives, they are way more common than a false positive. In other words, if a parasite is reported, it is probably true. More recently, fecal tests are detecting antigens or proteins specific to a parasite to make a diagnosis. These antigen tests provide more accurate results, which can allow us to treat before you notice any symptoms or before you notice a parasite trying to exit your cat. Treating digestive tract parasites. Treatment should be specific for the parasite seen in the home or on a diagnostic test. One treatment may not be enough you may have to repeat a treatment to officially declare your cat parasite free for now. Remember, reinfection is possible as parasites can and will find their way inside. And yes, indoor only cats are susceptible. Sometimes we treat even with a negative fecal analysis if the likelihood of parasites is high, like with kittens. Treatment is generally in the form of a dewormer that gets common parasites. For example, I recommend deworming kittens at their first visit with either Profender or Drontal, which gets my three most common parasites, roundworms, tapeworms, and hookworms. If I have a cat with fleas or flea dirt, I treat for tapeworms because there is a decent chance that cat also has tapeworms if they ingested a flea. I didn't always do this, but after getting so many calls about rice coming out of the back end, in a cat I diagnosed and treated for fleas just a few weeks ago, now I treat to help avoid this future surprise for cat parents. Now the important part of this video, answering your questions. My vet just gave a dewormer to my cat, so why am I seeing worms? This question can be answered in a couple of ways. First and most importantly, not every dewormer gets every parasite. When I hear this question being asked, my first thought is, what dewormer was administered? Take a look at this chart. Here's a list of common dewormers or treatments that target our five parasites. Secondly, some dewormers have to be given a second or third time, often a few weeks apart, to completely eliminate the parasite. The reason for this is most dewormers only kill the adults, not the larvae which can still develop into adults later. Only a few products kill both the adults and immature worms. 
My cat's fecal was negative, but I'm seeing worms. The limitations of the fecal flotation test may be at play here. Unfortunately, this test does have some limitations, which is why many reference laboratories are moving more towards antigen and PCR fecal tests instead of looking for eggs. Remember, just because a fecal analysis is negative does not mean your cat is parasite free. So I'm seeing worms, how worried should I be? In most cases, seeing a worm or a symptom related to a parasite is not an emergency. Remember, by the time you see a worm or a symptom, that parasite has been in your cat for a while. Yes, bad things can happen like anemia or an intestinal blockage, but these are rare. If your cat is acting fairly normal, give your primary vet a call at your earliest convenience. My cat has been treated for parasites, has a negative fecal, but still has diarrhea. Why? Even after successful identification and treatment of a known parasite, there can be lasting effects on your cat's digestive tract, most commonly soft stool or diarrhea, and this can last for weeks to months. Hookworms use their hook-like head to attach to the wall of the intestine and obtain a blood meal. Tapeworms anchor their head in the intestinal wall, and coccidia can wreak havoc on the lining of the intestine. So even though these nasty parasites are gone, their effects on your cat's digestive tract can linger. In most cases, time is all that is needed. Staying more on the conservative side, I generally recommend a probiotic like Fortiflora and an easy to digest diet like Hills ID or Purina EN to help get these cats digestive tract back to normal. My cat was dewormed and now I'm seeing worms in the stool. What's that about? Don't worry, they are dead. If your cat received a dewormer and adults were in their digestive tract, they died and now your cat is passing these dead worms out of the body, hopefully into their litter box. My vet treated for fleas and tapeworms at the same time, but I'm still seeing tapeworms. Why? This is why many vets recommend a second tapeworm treatment a few weeks apart. It can take months to break the flea cycle and rid your home of fleas. And during this time, your cat may ingest another flea and get another tapeworm infection, especially during the first few weeks of a flea treatment. To learn more about fleas, check out my Got Fleas video. My cat is indoor only. How did they get parasites? We've touched on this a little bit, but things you might not have considered include rodents or insects like cockroaches and flies can carry parasites in. Raw diets. Dirt on the bottom of your shoes, especially after gardening or visiting a dog park. New pets, especially kittens and dog's feet. Things you can do to help prevent these parasites from entering the home include pest control if rodents or insects are known to enter the home, avoiding raw or undercooked diets, leaving your shoes outside before entering the house, especially after gardening or visiting a dog park, separating new furry additions in the home until they are clear of parasites, keeping dogs on a regular parasite and deworming schedule. Additional preventative measures you can take include keeping cats inside, washing your hands with soap and water, especially after gardening and cleaning the litter box, and checking your cat's stool one to two times a year, and regular deworming, especially in kittens and cats that spend time outside. And the best thing you can do to help prevent parasites is to use a comprehensive monthly parasite preventative like Revolution Plus, which addresses Fleas, ticks, ear mites, hookworms, roundworms, and heartworm. So there you have it, the five most common parasites I see that affects a cat's digestive tract and how to treat them. Remember, indoor-only cats are at risk. Regular testing and prevention go a long way in keeping your cat and family safe. For more information, visit the Companion Animal Parasite Council's website, link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you on my next video.